Hi guys, welcome back to Dexter's World channel. I would like to share with you the incident that happened just this morning. I thought that it's the baby of our catfish, but it turned out to be a predator of the catfish. And these are the baby frogs. And these baby frogs are very plenty that we have to extract this baby frog from the catfish pond because they are eating the baby catfish. I believe that this is more than 10,000 baby frogs that if we will not separate them from the baby catfish, all of our baby catfish will be devoured. And this is the reason why we spend so much time and effort catching all the baby frogs that would somehow become a devastating predator. These are literally thousands of tadpoles that are infiltrating the pond of our baby catfish. And what we are doing here is trying to save some of the catfish that were included here. And please do make some suggestions what we're going to do with these tadpoles. Are we gonna kill them or we will release them right at the mud pond? But I'm more convinced of releasing them in the mud pond because I'd like to feed them to our tilapia and adult catfish over there. And I can see some kohol, I can see some of the, you know, nymphs, the baby dragonflies that are here. And this is what makes things very exciting because the nature is really working here. The dragonfly can grow babies. The frogs can lay eggs and, you know, have these tadpoles. But it will become detrimental also for our baby catfish, especially if we are not feeding them. It's good that we are feeding our baby catfish that the attention of this frog are focused on the food that we are giving but if we don't feed them the frog's attention will be shifted to eating the baby catfish that will you know make us fail in this catfish farming and this is the reason why we have to be keenly observant about what is happening right inside your fish pond Now I understood the importance of having this elevated pond because they will not be reachable by the frogs. The only predator that can disturb in this kind of tank is the bird. And this can be easily addressed as well because we can just use the net as cover to our tanks to ensure that the birds could not really eat our fish during nighttime. And uh, this is the only thing that can happen 
but in the fish tanks which are low, then many things could happen. They can be infiltrated by the frogs, by the dragonflies, and the rats, and many others. So I would like to make some suggestions that if you're still starting on your catfish farming or even the koi farming, then you can also consider, you know, doing a pond like this, elevated, so that the predators are less likely to infiltrate the fish that are inside the tank. And you look at this, our catfish that are here are already growing big and I can count thousands of them already. Well, I cannot safely assume that the population are still complete, meaning that the 3,000 number of baby catfish are still 3,000 right now because we cannot verify it. But the moment we feed them, they surface and eat the food and they're plenty. And I'm so you know, glad with this development because this is not just an easy thing to do. You know, maintaining a pond like this and ensuring that they will really grow big is not an easy task. We have to do some tedious monitoring about the health, the water quality, and even the protection of the fish from the predators. So things are coming good for us. I hope that we can start up with our restaurant for this catfish as recipes so that our customers could start eating the catfish that we can serve in this floating restaurant or the boat restaurant that we are also trying to accomplish. And I'm so glad that we already have completed the boat house on the 80 or 85%. The 15% will be done in the next coming days. So this is how nature plays here and I will not kill all these frogs. I will release this to the mud pond. I think they can be the best food also for the big catfish that are there. And we have their tilapias and the ducks can also eat this, you know, tadpoles of these frogs. And you know that this can be also a good source of protein for our ducks. I just don't know if this is edible, but since I observed that these tadpoles are also present there, and I saw it myself, the ducks eating the tadpoles. So this can be a good food for our chickens and even the ducks. But I would like them to live. I don't want them to die off the water. So I'm going to put them in the big pond and then it's up for the ducks to eat them. So my staff now will release all these tadpoles and I will ask the Cody and Arjun, they are going to release this in the mud pan. So thank you guys for watching. That's all that we can share. I hope that you will continue to like and share our videos. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, may I humbly ask you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading regularly this kind of videos. And if you are into farming, if you are a pet lover, a pet keeper, please subscribe to the channel because this is the channel that is good for you. We are revealing our ups and downs our best and bad practices, and even the victories that we experience out of the practical methods and tips that we, we do in this farm. So I would like to see you in my next video, all here at Dexter's World.